read from the background as uh, containing the agreement give everyone a bit of an idea of this database. In May 2014, the Ministry initiated a project to develop an electronic database called the Risk Driven Tracking Database to provide a standardized means of gathering de-identified information on situations of acutely elevated risk for communities in the province of Ontario implementing multi-sectorial risk intervention models. Acutely elevated risk refers to any situation negatively affecting the health or safety of an individual, family, group, or place where agencies, organizations are permitted in legislation to share personal information in order to prevent imminent harm to an individual or others. What the database is, our community mobilization officer does uh, have access to this database and it basically uh, is used by members of the situation table to share that information and allow those individuals to record, uh, create a bit of a history on some of those things that have been dealt with in order to allow an analyst to take a look at the bigger picture and attempt to identify resolutions from different perspectives. So we do have access. I've not personally seen the database. We're in the process of identifying our, uh, identify our new community mobilization officer uh, today, in fact. And that's something that we want to better understand what the benefits are and how much information is actually contained in that. But we do utilize that database. So we're just being asked to extend the access that we already have. Yes, that's correct. And that we want. Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, okay. Uh, any questions on that? If we could have a motion allowing me to sign this extension agreement. Moved by Charlie, yes. seconded by Carol. All in favor? Thank you. Uh, inspector's report. Mr. Chairman, if I may, just prior to uh, starting with my report, I noticed the item was not included on the agenda. However, I do have a submission here from uh, Police Auctions Canada and a check in the amount of $19.88, if I may submit that. Sure. I, I think we need we need a motion to accept accept that into our proceeds of crime fund. Correct. Seconded. Carol, all in favor? Thank you. I was hoping you'd say 1,900. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Inspector. So I'll begin with the inspector's report on page 58. So overtime expenditures for 2017 to date uh, estimate the amount of $297,653, which is 82.72% of the allowance for 2017, which is below the year-to-date amount spent in 2016. Auxiliary policing hours for the month of September recorded at 488. On to the Crime Stoppers report on page 60. To date, there have been 502 anonymous tips received so far this year. That's a change of 37 tips over the last month. On to the uh, locally dedicated hours of overtime on page 61. For the month of October, there were 1,313 recorded hours in the month of October. So for a total of 7,319 hours, which is below our, projected to be below our 2016 total. On page 62 is the calls for service billing summary report. This is a report that's being included. Uh, it's net new. This gives you an idea and allows the police service board to monitor those billable calls for service as we proceed through the, the year. I can say that year to date in 2017, the total billable calls for service are 12085 compared to 2016 year to date, which is 12,290. 
So over to page 67. Can, can we go back to page 63 for a second? Sorry, 63? Yeah. Yes. Um, sex assaults are up 30% year to date and it is a very high profile item now. Um, do you have any comment on that? I mean, it, where I'm coming from is that a decade ago, we had a high profile event and it res resulted in uh, public education sec sessions that uh, women went to on how to protect themselves. And uh, one of them was uh, basically a, um, almost a police asp attached to their car keys, which I see around frequently still. Um, but it, 30% uh, increase seems like a big number to me and it is, it's been in the new, no, news nightly for the last several weeks. And I was hoping that Norfolk County had uh, been exempted, but we don't appear to be. So um, I was wondering whether you have any comments on that? I'd have to look at those particular occurrences in more detail to know why there is that, that increase. There's nothing that I'm aware of at this time where we're planning a, an educational event, certainly something we can look at without knowing, and certainly it is in the media more these days, uh, it is something we can look at further. Okay, any, any questions or comments on that? So if you want to go back to the page that you were leading from, which I think was page 67. Yes, page 67, just in general, violent crime across the region is trending down. Uh, additionally, detachment, uh, Norfolk County is also trending down. So on to page 68 where we'll divide out the violent crime assaults. So for the month of October, there were 20 events. This is within the projected events for the month. It is down from September 2017 and is down overall compared to 2016. On page 69, domestic disturbances. We have 35 events for the month of October. It is below the projected range. It is down from September 2017 and down overall compared to 2016. On page 70, property crime. Just in general, region is trending up. Norfolk County detachment is trending down. Page 71, break and enters. There were 12 events recorded in October. This is below the projected range. It is down over September 2017 and down overall compared to 2016. On page 72, frauds. There were 10 events recorded in October. That is within the projected range. It is down compared to September 2017 and down overall compared to 2016. On page 73, mischiefs. There were 17 events reported in the month of October. It is below the projected range. It is down over September 2017 and down overall compared to 2016. On page 74, theft from motor vehicles under 5,000. There were 26 events recorded in the month of October. This is above the projected range. It is up from September 2017 and is up overall compared to 2016. This, in my opinion, continues to be a problem. The majority of these occurrences are unlocked vehicles with valuables inside. We have conducted both focus patrol events and media campa campaigns, including Lock It or Lose It. I will point out that recently, as of uh, on Monday, November 6th, in, 2000, in 2017, we did investigate uh, an occurrence involving suspicious males and entering vehicles, and subsequently we did make three arrests 
of two 18-year-old and one 17-year-old male, and they have been charged for offenses in relation to theft of motor vehicles. But just for clarity, most of them have been unlocked vehicles. Yes, the majority are unlocked with valuables inside, uh, and in most cases, either visible or close access, center console, glove compartment. So with, uh, we are, again, putting out media messages, especially with Christmas coming, coming up. Uh, people do tend to leave unlocked or valuables in their car visible, and that certainly is a, is a concern. So we will continue in our efforts, and uh, again, we, we do rely heavily on the public for you know, observing some of these suspicious people in the neighborhood. Dave? Mr. Chair, uh, our community has been very aggressive on this. They do a great job at uh, Dover, everywhere. Lock it or lose it. They put out a team, like when there's uh, something happening at the high school, found a lot, a lot of vehicles unlocked with valuables. How do we compare with the other communities? We are aggressive in, in educating the people. I just wonder how we compare with the other areas. I don't have that answer offhand. I'd have to go back and make some comparables to, to other areas. I know full well that provincially we continue to drive the lock and lose it program. I know that theft from motor vehicle continues to be a concern. How we compare to some of those other communities, I can't say for sure without looking at the stats. And the reason I ask this question, obviously the public just doesn't, doesn't get it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. On page 75, theft of motor vehicles, there were nine events recorded in the month of October. This is within the projected range. It is down over September 2017 and down overall compared to 2016. On page 76, theft under 5,000, we have 55 events recorded in the month of October. This is within the projected range. It is down over September 2017 However, it is projected to be on par with 2016. On page 77, illicit drugs. We have four events recorded in the month of October. This is below the projected range. This is trending down in the region. It is equal to September 2017 and down overall compared to 2016. I will note that the Community Street Crime Unit continue to make an impact in our county on a regular basis. On page 78, motor vehicle collisions. For the month of October, there were 77 property damage only collisions, 13 personal injury or non-fatal injury collisions, and one fatality recorded in the county. On page 79, 911 calls and hang-ups. There were 209 events recorded in the month of October. This is within the projected range. It is down compared to September 2017, down overall compared to 2016. And as you'll note, at the previous, through the previous years, there continues to be a downward trend. On page 80, alarms. There were 55 events recorded in the month of October. This is below the projected range. It is up compared to September 2017 and down overall compared to 2016, and it continues to trend downwards. On page 81, impaired operation, we had six events recorded in the month of October. This is within the projected range and it is up compared to 2000, September 2017. On page 82, Mental Health Act, there were 63 events recorded in the month of October. This is above the projected range. It is up from September 2017 and up compared to 2016. As mentioned previously, the average hour per call is approximately 4.5 hours. This continues to be an area that we will address.
on page 83 with respect to foot patrol for the month of October we recorded 460.75 hours of foot patrol there were 11 hours of bicycle patrol and 31 recorded school of school visits or events on page 84 the driving charges that information is still not available to date and we do not have any indication of when that will again be available driver's license suspensions for the month of October there were six roadside screening device tests 12 administrative driver license suspensions six three-day suspensions a total of 33 ride events and 18 ride or seat belt events for the month of October with respect to focus patrols as mentioned previously we did have a focus patrol regarding thefts from motor vehicles in Simcoe this took place between the 11th of October and the 31st October this focus patrol was generated in response to an increase of theft from motor vehicles that have been served in Simcoe as a result six officers dedicated 16.25 hours there were no arrests or charges during the time frame of this patrol there were five threat theft for motor vehicle incidents in the identified focus patrol area in reviewing those incidents almost all of the vehicles were unlocked with valuables inside as I mentioned we continue to relay the message through various campaigns including lock it or lose it on to traffic one of the highway safety division big four on highway three in Simcoe in Delhi this continues until 31 December 2017 as of the 17th of October 2017 38 Norfolk County officers have de dedicated 234.75 hours to this patrol a total of 68 charges and 14 more 14 warnings have been issued although it spe specifies Norfolk County officers that is inclusive of Highway Safety Division members the next one on Highway 24 in Brant County or between Brant County and Simcoe again that goes until the 31st of December as of 17 October 2017 31 officers have dedicated 429 hours to this patrol a total of 243 charges and 11 warnings have been issued the focus patrol on James Street in Delhi this is a 40 kilometer per hour zone outside the high school this occurred between the 30th of October and the 19th of November okay my apology I don't have the results at this time for that uh, that focus patrol that will be included in the next report uh, the focus patrol on Pine Grove Road in Delhi uh, this one has been extended uh, given to given the number of complaints in this area so that will also be reported next uh, meeting additionally the focus patrol in st. Williams on town line street uh, this I don't have the results at this time either they will come at the next meeting The ones that uh, the additional ones that have been closed on Nelson Street and Port Over. Uh, this occurred between the 20th of September and the 20th of October. This was generated in response to a complaint of speeding along Nelson Street. A speed spy study was conducted and supported the need for a focus patrol. As a result of this focus patrol, five officers dedicated 8.25 hours. A total of one charge for unsafe passing was issued, along with eight warnings for speeds between 65 and 69 kilometers per hour this focus patrol is now closed I believe I mentioned the last meeting I personally attended that area as well what I did observe is a number of people not slowing down when they do reach that 50 kilometer per hour zone sign and they continue uh, as mentioned I was approached by a member of the community who uh, reiterated the concerns 
The next one is on Swimming Pool Road in Delhi. This occurred between the 16th of October and the 30th of October. This focus patrol was generated in response to a complaint of speeding along Swimming Pool Road in Delhi. A speed spy study was conducted and supported the need for a focus patrol. As a result, three officers dedicated three hours. There were no charges laid, and this focus patrol is now closed. The speed spy studies to report, uh, there was one on the 31st of October on Townley Street in St. Williams. There was a problem identified and there was a focus patrol initiated as I spoke to uh, previously. On the same date, there was a speed spy study conducted on Talbert Street in Cortland. And there was no problem determined and no focus patrol initiate, initiated. Subject to any questions, that is that concludes the inspector's report. Questions for the inspector on his report. Questions for the inspector on any other topic. Seeing none, if we could have a motion to adopt his report as information by Jim, second by Dave. All in favor? Thank you. Um, other business. There's a couple other things. For, for, first is the meeting date for December. Uh, I believe we have formally changed it to December 20th before, but I thought I'd better remind the board that we've done that. And I believe that we have formally changed the date of January's meeting to January 17th because uh, the buildings occupied the fo following week. So just a reminder that those are the dates. Um, one other question, and I'm not sure I asked it at the last meeting. What, have we received the ride grant, and was it up to our expectation? And will it increase or decrease the rides during the next month? Uh, I can answer that, Mr. Chair. We did receive a ride grant. Uh, it was uh, comparable to last year. Um, I don't have the exact amount, but I... It was, we asked for the same as last year and we received the same. And uh, as for rides, we'll conduct them as, as we do normally. And Good. Any other business? Seeing none, if we can move on to question period. Any questions? Body. Morning, everyone. Morning. Um, I guess I have a question for for you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I was wondering um, if you could give me an update on uh, uh, Chief Horvat's status. Uh, uh, he, we, we've got interim Chief uh, Nash here, and I'm wondering, has anybody established the timetable for uh, Chief Horvat coming back to uh, Norfolk? Uh, as of this moment, it is he is still scheduled to come back uh, at the end of January. Okay. Now, I was away on holidays this fall and I was out of the loop. What exactly is Chief Horvat up to right now? He's been seconded to something, has he? Well, I, th I should probably let Sean do that one. Yes, please. Yeah, Inspector Horvat's been, uh, he's on a temporary assignment as a major critical incident commander for West Region. So he's performing the role of a critical incident commander. Um, Inspector, uh, is this an oversight uh, role on his part, or is this to do with a specific incident of some kind? Uh, he, is he uh, been seconded to this position to provide guidance of some sort with regard to, let's say, the formulation of policy or? Um, or has this got to do with something specific that's going on? There was an individual who retired, and we had a vacancy. And given Inspector Horvat's qualifications and experience, he was asked to assume the role on a temporary basis. And in turn, I was asked to uh, sit in his place in the interim. All righty. And um, uh, Inspector Nash, uh, uh, what happens to yourself uh, when uh, Chief Horvat comes back? Uh, do you have some sort of arrangement that you're going to at the end of January? 
my home location is actually a West Region headquarters in London, so I've returned to my home location. So he's not like Cinderella, and he doesn't turn back into a pumpkin. So. <laughs> and, 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 and what do you do at West Region, if you don't mind me asking, please? So my role is currently business finance manager. So I have oversight for a number of community safety programs, media. Uh, I'm the liaison for contract policing in West Region. I'm a facility liaison. I provide uh, liaison for the auxiliary program, Crime Stoppers. Okay. I think that covers most of that. Great, thank you. Thank you, Marty. If there are no further questions, if we could have a motion to move into closed session. Moved by Charlie, seconded by Jim. All in favor? Thank you. Thanks for bailing me out, Andy. <laughs> <laughs>